0.98, and this is based on the amended statement of charges. Counts, count one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12 is admitted by the respondent. Count, wait a minute, where's, count two. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't think there's a break in my page, hold on. So it's count one, one through five, she admits. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, count two is the um, refers to the uh, relationship. So six, seven, I'm finding that this is breaking up in my page. So hold on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Count one, one through five is admitted. Count two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. We can find for that. So even though she denied eleven, you can find. Um, this is Attorney Fazina. Sorry to interrupt. I think she also denied two C. Two C. Paragraph two C. The controlled substance receipt records. The controlled substance records. Okay. Yes. So, well, I think one, remember uh, this is receipt should... records. Remember the receipt records. I think they're referring to are the when they came from the pharmacy, and she had ripped off the labels. I don't think it was a controlled substance medical rec. It was the receipt records from the pharmacy. Which is a little bit different than we usually see, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, she denied, uh, Attorney Casina's right, she denied it, but I think based on the paper, we can find for that, Jerry. Okay, so she admitted to A and B and denied C. Correct. Okay. And count two, she denies. Um, number 11. Yes. But can we find for 2C and 11? We can find for 2C and we can find for count two, number 11. All right. Okay. So Fine. essentially the motion is uh, fined for all charges. Correct. Okay. So do I have a second? Second, Gina. Okay. Um, do you want to hold discussion until remedy? Or do you want to do some discussion now? Hold I don't until remedy. Need, okay, so. I don't need any more discussion unless somebody wants to discuss it, but I can go right to it. Okay, so all in favor of finding on all charges? Aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Abstaining. So it was unanimous to find on all charges. Remedy? Uh, well, based on the... Uh, Length of these charges, applications of this licensed professional, I am uh, recommending that her license be revoked. Okay, I second. So the motion is for a revocation. Do I have a second? Second, Mary. All right, discussion. I think we need some discussion if we're revoking right, so the license. I think, I think, that, <laughs> the I license. think that this goes across the board uh, in terms of her license and that she has demonstrated uh, incompetence. She has demonstrated and we have uh, cited her um, inability to possess good judgment, both clinically and professionally. She has crossed boundaries. She has... Um, uh, put uh, the patients at the Gardner Center in harm's way with her um, 
lack of clinical judgment and um, her involvement with her own particular health issues, which would put the patients at risk. I would agree with that and just add that she also continues to uh, deny allegations when the um, evidence is obviously there in relationship with the, as, uh, sorry, in relationship to the relationship, um, there's obvious evidence and she's not forthcoming with what appears to be the truth. Other comments from board members? Mary? I'm in a yeah, I'm in agreement with what has been discussed by other colleagues, um, but also um, the um, 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 the defendant herself agreed that um, what um, her behavior exhibited was unsafe nursing practice. And we have nothing in front of us that shows that she is able to practice safely. And there's multiple incidences here. There is not just one event. We have um, overuse of baclofen, baclofen with diverse. We have um, um, behaviors that are unsafe. We have the inability to um, recognize the difference between hyper and hypoglycemia. And then, um, the treatment that was instituted that could have been easily done to a patient, never mind herself. And then she's responsible for patients at the same time. Um, the relationship with an individual who was in and out of prison, um, and then continuing that relationship for another two months. Um, I, I just, I, I have no evidence in front of me that says that there is um, a break in this pattern and to um, make any other decision at this point in time would, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Uh, and I think uh, you, you pointed out, Mary, we have no evidence to the contrary where she is in her uh, treatment plan. And the documents that go with every continuance request and every rescheduling of, of these meetings include a very detailed page, two pages that tells you what you need to submit in order to go forward with your hearing. And we don't have any of that. And that really, we only have one side of the story and we have a partial side of the second side of the story, but no documents to support it. So even though we're very reluctant, do this, um, I, I think that's our only course. That's our only recourse at this point in time. So uh, the motion is for revocation. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. It was unanimous for revocation. Uh, Ms. Scanlon, you will get a document from the department that outlines um, the charges and the decision of the board uh, that will be forthcoming at some point. So you have an actual document uh, about, the, about the outcome of the hearing. Okay. Um, so the next is the hearing for Cheryl uh, Corsier, and I have to take a break now. I saw all these other people eating. I have not been able to eat, so I'm going to grab a, a fast food and uh, do you want to reconvene like at 2.15? So I, I'm going to be recusing myself. This is Gina. So, um, so we will see you next next month. Next that's week. it. <laughs> that's it. Okay. All righty. All right. Okay, take care of right. everybody. Thanks, Gina. Actually, we'll see, yeah. actually, we'll see you next week. It's next week, right? It's not next week, the 18th. Next yeah. Week. yeah. Next week. Uh, right. regular third Wednesday of the month. Right. Jeff retiring messed us all up. So we can all <laughs> Jeff. Is Jeff retiring? He retired already. He retired. He's not here right us. now? But he's still with no, us. He's back. But he's a oh. retired retiree. Oh wow. He had to stop out for a month. And that's what the problem. He was April first. Oh. So there's no one at the department to put together our packets. Beyond oh, April 6th. Him. But he's back? Oh, yeah. Like, well, I'm not sure he'll come back. 
after this meeting. Uh, he's really ambivalent about coming back, so let's treat him nicely. Uh, so, we all uh, nicely. We're not nice. Nice. Uh, they just came back in. Should, yeah, should, I know. should I put okay. like the um video on or no? No, they're going on no, a 15 minute break. break, break till till 15. 15. I didn't hear that. Oh, we can have a quorum because I think Jerry had to go to work. Okay. okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. One, See if they have a quorum. Two, three, four, five. Yes, we have a quorum. Gina, I think you count a recusal, don't you, as a, 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 a they're still counted in the quorum, aren't they? No, no they're not. No, no, I never get that. that you can still go One, forward with two, the hearing. Three, because we're four. Taking a vote. We have five of us. That's all we have. Okay. For the quorum. All right. Fifth. Yeah, uh, two fifteen. Yep. They're not going to vote on yeah, anything, right? Yes. Because it's only going to be continuous. Okay, bye, everybody. See you next week. No, they just revoked that girl. Mm -hmm. The one before you. They just revoked. Mm -hmm. The the backless one. one? Pardon me? The back was I mean. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Lovely. Well, great mood there. <laughs> okay. You've got your you've got your your you mute yourself. Yeah. Okay.
<coughs> Jerry, are you back? Uh, Mary thought you were, were going to go to work. You're muted. I'm going to try to listen as much as I can, but I may have to just jump out for a minute. Okay. I had okay. A office. Yeah. All right. Fine. We're just waiting for board members to return from the break. We should be here any second. Jerry, you are back. I thought you had patience to see. Uh, I do, and I'm going to jump in and jump back in and out. So I'm going to stay out for a minute. Okay. All right, there's that. This phone came out a little lopsided. Your own speaker. All right. Thank you, babe. Uh, uh, Jason, are you back? Cindy? They were going to come back. Um, we don't have our attorney either. They probably all did what I did. I opened the door and then I stepped outside <laughs> for a minute. It is so gorgeous. So I see Stacy's back, so I guess we're all set. Yeah, I can hear uh, Joe, uh, Attorney Newton's here. I see Attorney Costello's here. Is your uh, uh, client? Oh, Sherry's. I see she has a square. Um, so I'm just waiting for some. I'm here. Members. Jason's here. All right. How Jason's about Cindy? Here. Let's see, do we have uh, one, two. I don't know. Is Jen back? I know she's in and out see her circle we don't have a quorum yet uh attorney shulman yes i know there's some objections some 
to documents being submitted. Do we need to have a quorum for that? Uh, no. Because I, it, it could come from you to allow the, the documents in. Okay, so we can go ahead and get started then, even if we don't have a quorum, because we're not going to be officially voting anyway. On right. Anything, really, if if we don't need to do that for the doc for the objections. Okay. Yep. All right. <clears throat> so, um, please excuse me, but uh, we never went on the record for um, Ms. Le Corsier. Because I do have board documents, but I don't know if that was just because it was in the um, packet of information. We've never been on the record yet. I actually, this is the reporter. I have us going on for about two minutes, having a brief conversation. Okay, but not before today. No, I, uh, I don't have this. Anything. This kind of all started back in January, so you know it's been a while. So, okay, so we will go on the record. On the record. Okay. This is a hearing for Cher Cheryl La Corsier. L A C O U R S I E R E R N A P R N petition numbers 2021-1072 and 2021-1199 uh, uh, um, okay um, i don't i usually try to do the license number here license number E43134 uh, and for the respondent, you're muted. Attorney Ellen Costello for Dr. LaCourcier. And uh, I see she's also present. You want to introduce yourself, yes. please, on the record? Yes, I'm Cheryl LaCourcier. Okay, thank you. And for the department? Good afternoon for the department, Attorney Joelle Newton. Okay, so Attorney Schulman, uh, board documents. Uh, yes, so bear with me because we have um, quite a few administrative issues that I want to make sure uh, there's no duplication of. Um, so first, we will enter the statement of charges dated January third, two thousand twenty-two. That is entered into the record as Board Exhibit One. Next is the motion for summary suspension. That's dated January 3rd, 2022. Entered into the record as Board Exhibit 2. The summary suspension dated January 5th, 2022 is entered into the record as Board Exhibit 3. The notice of hearing dated January 5th, 2022 for a hearing scheduling scheduled for January 19th, 2022 is entered into the record as Board Exhibit 4, a motion for continuance from respondent on January 18, 2022, is entered into the record as Board Exhibit 5. The ruling on the motion is dated January 18, 2022, rescheduling the hearing for February 16, 2022. And this is entered into the record as Board Exhibit 6. And then I have the notice of rescheduled hearing dated May 6, 2022 for the hearing for today uh, on May 11, 2022. This is entered into the record as Board Exhibit 7. I also have a motion to amend the statement of charges and an objection to the motion. So. Um, with respect to the motion to amend the statement of charges, I will um, give Attorney Newton the platform to explain the amendment. Oh, the, the motion, the charges were amended. The, the motion was granted. The it motion was, was granted. Okay. I, for some reason, I thought it was, but I don't have anything in terms of an identification. So did we formally mm -hmm. enter it? We we did enter it, but the motion to amend statement of charges was granted on January nineteenth, twenty twenty two. Okay, so it was okay. Okay, so we did not enter it. No, we will no. enter it now. So okay, we've had a lot of documents that are board documents that we've never assigned a number to. Nope, this is perfect. Good to I know. put 
Uh, Attorney Shulman, I put the document up on the screen. Okay, very good. So the motion to amend the statement of charges dated January 19, 2022 is entered into the record as Board Exhibit 8. The objection to that motion to amend the statement of charges is entered into the record as Board Exhibit 9. And the amended statement of charges, which was granted, is entered into the record as Board Exhibit 10. And Attorney Shulman, uh, at the meeting in January when the motion was granted, uh, the board also uh, denied respondents' objection. And I put that up on the screen. Thank you. Will that be entered as a document? Well, that's part of the. Is it, yeah, so she, oh, she has so it on there. Part of yes, 10. So that so would be, be part of nine then. Okay. Board Exhibit 9. Okay. Correct. He's just, he's just highlighting for us that it was denied and circled on there and signed. Right. Okay. Okay, very good. So now that brings us up to, I, and I have to apologize, I do not see an answer in the record, Attorney Costello. Uh, don't we have some more motions? Uh, I did try don't we have a motion for continuance? That was already done. Yeah, I'm working. Attorney Shulman? Yes. An answer was filed late yesterday afternoon. Oh, God. I can put that up on the screen. All right. Thank you. Give me one second. Yeah, right now I'm just working on the board exhibits. So that would go under the board exhibits. Right. Amended statement. I, I don't see it, Jeff. What happened to it? I'm going to put it up on oh, the screen. Okay. It was just yeah. filed yesterday. We just got it. Oh, okay. yes, late yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give me one second, please. Yep. For those in the uh, board members of the amended statement of charges, you should uh, pull that document up so that you can do um, note whether they're admitted or denied. Uh, uh, so you a little too fast. So all of two A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, H, and I, and J, and K are all denied, correct? In total. Correct. Is that correct, Attorney Costello? Yes, correct. Okay. Uh, you, roll back, uh, Jeff. Okay. And number three, denied. Number four is board, but number five is denied. Six denied. Denied. <clears throat> oh, seven denied, eight denied. Uh, denied, denied, denied. Okay. Okay, so we will okay, enter the, we'll the answer from respondent into the record as board exhibit 11. Okay. So that's all I have for board exhibits. There is an objection to all of the exhibits that are being uh, submitted by the department. And I will allow Attorney Costello, um, as far as I could see, I could just see that there was a blanket um, objection, but I didn't see the basis. So if you could elaborate. Excuse me, before we do, how many department exhibits are there that are being objected to? Just so we have a sense. I let me let me make it easy. I, I, I don't remember objecting, but if I did, I well, I don't object. Uh, there's seven exhibits. So you would there's draw no objection, Attorney Costello, to any of those? There is an email yeah, that I'm, I. So I'm there's not, no. I'm not, okay. Okay. I'm not so gonna, I'm not going to object, object. Okay. So we have um, 
Department Exhibit 1 is the investigative report dated December 29th, 2021. This is entered under seal. Department Exhibit 2. Is uh, uh, hold, hold, hold on. We don't have these documents. Okay, so we kept them from I our guess summary yeah, suspension yeah, packet yeah, because yes, they weren't in our yeah, packet. Exactly. So this is this is a problem. So I believe some of us might have it from our uh, no, you would not have it in pocket. You would not have it because there was so an objection. Right. So now that there is no objection, they can be they can be sent to you. And how are we going to get them sent to us? I will email so okay. all the yeah. in my little phone. Curry. I'm going to have to look at these documents. Okay. I'm not happy with this. I, I know I know Jeff has been out, but you know now we're going to have to read seven respondent documents in a space of well, however long it takes us while everyone watches us read these. Uh, well, I just this has to be much more efficient and it's been efficient. And so I'm just a little bit upset about this. Unfortunately, okay. if there's an objection, we can't send them to. Yeah, you. I know. I know that uh, I know so, it's not our fault, but uh, let's get our dialogue clear. Then if we're objecting, then we can object. If we're not objecting, then we're not objecting. Uh, so just, you know, for the record, uh, and I was not happy that we got all the respondents documents yesterday. This has been going on since January. Uh, duh. I think we could have had them before yesterday, 121 pages of documents from the respondent uh, that mm -hmm, could have been mm -hmm. sent in a more timely manner. Um, I mean, we well, are a volunteer were, board. Uh, and they so were, we have to be cognizant of all of our other responsibilities that we have as a board member. So I just want to put that on the record. I know Jeff's been out, so that might be some of the confusion. Uh, no, not a thing attributed to him, obviously, uh, but uh, just, uh, you know, these things can be done in a way more timely manner like they have been in the past. Uh, just that. So I, you can send us the board documents and I mean, the response, the department's documents, Jeff, however long it takes us to read them. Yeah, the okay. department would like to point out that the department filed its exi updated exhibits on January 17th, 2022. So they were filed timely. Just yes, but I know that there's an objection. You can't move forward. I understand that very clearly. Right. Uh, and and respondents uh, somehow the communication failed some way. So, so we the so respondents exhibits were also filed months ago, but they were objected to. Okay, Attorney uh, Shulman. I'm sorry, there's not a full objection to all of respondents' documents. There, I think it's only the first document. Yeah, if I'm yeah. Well, it's Exhibit well, A. But that's all yesterday, others. Right. The department only did not correct. The department didn't object to most of the exhibits from respondents. Thank you. Okay, Attorney Shulman. So it's so it's clear. I will now send the department's exhibits to the board. I will email it to them. There's no objections. That's is that correct? According to Attorney Costello, yes. Okay, I will email them to the board now. Shoot. Okay, look at it in my little phone. Chair Buffard, would you like me to pause the record? Yes, I think you can pause the record until Attorney Schulman uh, gets the documents so she can enter them. Well, I have them. Oh, you've so had them. All right, don't pause the record. She make sure everybody else got them. them. Does everyone else have them while I identify them and enter them? They're being sent by email now. And there is a cover page, so it's clearly delineated what exhibits are being entered. Oh, so no thank one. you, Attorney Newton, for that. All right, it should be showing up in your email any second. And Attorney Shulman, I did not copy you because you already have that. Yes, I already have it. Thank you. Got it. Okay, so um, we have the department's exhibit 
one is the investigative report dated December 29th, 2021, and that's sealed. Entered into the record as Department Exhibit 2 is Petitioner Number 1 Complaint, and that's sealed. Entered into the record as Department Exhibit 3 is Petitioner Number 1 Email Communication, that is sealed. Entered into the record as Department Exhibit 4 is Petitioner Number 1 Medical Records, that is sealed. Entered into the record as Department Exhibit 5 is Petitioner Number 2 Complaint, and that is sealed. Entered into the record as Department Exhibit 6 is Petitioner Number 2 Medical Records, and that is sealed. And lastly, entered into the record as Department Exhibit 7 is Margaret Tressler McLaughlin, RNMS, APRN, BC, Curriculum Vitae, and that is entered into the record again as Department Exhibit 7, no seal. Okay. Uh, Okay, there's been no, so uh, just to clarify, since there's been some confusion, Attorney Casella, there is no objection to any of those seven documents, correct? That is correct. Okay, all right. So are you gonna enter the respondent documents at this point in time? Or do you want to hold them, Attorney Costello, to later? Um, I think you can, uh, just for housekeeping, I think you can go ahead and admit them. I oh. believe you have them. There's an, okay. uh, there's an objection to one of the documents. Yeah, right. so there's an outstanding objection for responding Exhibit A, and I will allow Attorney Newton to elaborate regarding that objection. Yes, uh, the Department's Exhibit, I'm sorry, Respondent's Exhibit A is just a, a, a one-line uh, record from a doctor. There's absolutely, there's no foundation, there's no explanation, there's nothing in the medical report with which to, um, to sustain and to uh, validify this doctor's opinion um, and thus the board should not it, it shouldn't be admitted because there's really nothing to the document that would enlighten the board to make any type of decision. Tony Costello would you like to respond? Yes um, the letter is simply it's not a medical record it's a return to work letter uh, from a physician and I think I mean, the board can uh, uh, take cognizance of whatever weight they want to give to it, but I don't see why it's uh, objectionable. It's a return to work letter, and it and, is indicating whether the individual is safe to return to work. And if the department would like to add that if it's a return to work, then the original letter indicating that she was out of work and why she was out of work should be part of it. Otherwise, um, it, the, the letter by itself makes no sense and has no meaning. The reason she was out of work is because you filed a motion for summary suspension, which was granted. That's why she was out of work. Oh, okay. I, I didn't realize the doctor gave, gives return to work for summary suspensions, but anyway, go on. Well, uh, I, I'm not sure, Attorney Schulman, you can uh, advise us on this, but I think that document was submitted as part of the objection to the amendment statement of charges, so we've already seen it. Yeah. So I believe that I'm going to overrule the objection. I would think, yeah, to formally enter it as a respondent's exhibit, we can also, as respondent exhibit A, as it's now enumerated, we can, you can just give it its due weight. Yes. Okay, so that's the letter of Dr. Jindal. Um, you know, you've, you've kind of phrased it as if it's a return to work, but it, 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 does, did Dr. Jindal treat Responding because I just want to get a grasp of whether this should be under seal. Yes, he did. He does say she was under his care. Right. Okay. So, uh, respondents exhibit A is entered under seal. Uh, respond believe Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Attorney Shulman. Respondent exhibit B is an expert report. Shouldn't that be under seal? There's patients' names. Yes. And this is, hold on one moment, because for some reason I have this like, this the, the order is backwards in the, um, in the, okay, respondent exhibit B, expert report, four pages sealed. Respondent exhibit C, expert resume. Respondent exhibit D, 
Keen Medical Files sealed. Uh, do we strike that? That's the patient's name. Should we say yep. KK or something? Really, yeah, and we need to redact it from the exhibit index. So strike that from the record, the, the name for the medical file. So noted. And then uh, respond in exhibit E uh, progress notes for K. Yeah. Well, it's two K. So one's K. Oh God, I forgot. K K F and one's K K. That's sealed. Yeah. Am I missing anything, Attorney Costello? Mm -hmm. So exhibit uh, I, F. I, I, the exhibit okay, index yeah, will have to also be one. sealed. Hold on a moment. because it does have the patient's names. Uh, Jeff, was there like a, a, a late file, if I'm not mistaken? Up to, oh, wait a minute. I think it was in the, I have to go out of this. Hold on. I have to go onto the direct remote. We have updated. Okay, and I have lastly, um, we'll take patient. F. Which are uh, medical records. Would that be respondent exhibit G? No, F, I believe. F. Okay. Um, okay, I might be missing something here. Respondent Exhibit A was the letter from Dr. Jindal, correct? Yes. B was the expert report? Yes. C was the expert resume? Yes. D was records for K? Yes. Okay, I have a second record here that says part yes. two, that was not entered. Do you yeah, want that would be together? Classified so, as progress notes. So E is just classified as progress notes, KK. <clears throat> and then F is the whole record of F. Okay. All right, yeah, so in our file online, we have a part one and a part two. Okay, very good. Okay, so F medical records are entered into the record as respondent exhibit F. Correct, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, so there is also an objection from attorney Costello regarding um, a witness that may be called by the department. We will deal with that at the time the witness is called. Okay. So we will now, um, I don't know, uh, attorneys uh, Newton and Costello, do you think your opening statements might be more appropriate at this point? And then we go off the record to read the, the records. Or yeah, that, I think that's good. Okay, that's I, I, 
I'm sorry for interrupting. I, I so got you, a delay. So you here. want to do your opening statement and that set the context for the documents? Is that um, agreeing with you, I will, Attorney Costello? I will, I will hold my opening until next week when I put my case on. Okay. All right. All right, so we'll hear uh, uh, Attorney Newton's uh, opening statement, and then we will go off the record uh, for the board members to review the documents just forwarded to us. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, the case that you're going to hear today arose out of patient complaints, um, and we don't get a lot. The department doesn't get a lot of cases that come directly from patients. They're usually <laughs> other reports, but these. This this case arose from not one patient, but actually two patients, and neither of those patients knew the other, uh, nor did they know that the other was filing a complaint. And the way the co complaints came was that both of these patients were treating with respondent. They were um, receiving psychiatric treatment from respondent and APRN through telehealth. And both of these patients had identical complaints in that during the sessions that respondent was treating them, she fell asleep, um, she was incoherent, she was out of it multiple times during the, during the uh, intercourse of the uh, patient treatment sessions. So actually during the sessions, and um, not only did that, both of them were you know, very concerned and they actually took pictures during these telehealth appointments of respondent falling asleep or you know not being coherent or not being attentive during actual patient sessions. So that's how the complaint became gen was was generated. And when the department took a closer look, it uh, obtained the patient records and had them reviewed by um, an expert witness, Ms. Margaret Tussler. And both patients, by the way, are here. Um, they're going to be testifying um, to tell you what happened. Um, and the patient records were also reviewed by Margaret Tussler and APRN. And uh, Ms. Tussler reviewed these records. And when she reviewed the records, she made a determination that there were multiple, multiple issues of the deviation of the standard of care. Um, the records themselves, the patient treatment records were very, uh, amongst other things, were very sparse. Um, however, um, she'll also be testifying that the billing um, that the respondent uh, billed for these treatment sessions was um, very vigorous um, and in fact uh, was in, inappropriate and or fraudulent at times for items that didn't take place during these sessions. In addition to that, the Ms. Trussler is going to be testifying um, about multiple issues regarding um, not only just the fact that it's inappropriate, certainly to fall asleep um, during sessions, um, as well as these patients are going to testify that not only did she fall asleep, at times she was in her pajamas, she treated these patients from her bedroom um, and even from a hospital in a hospital journey. In addition to that, um, Ms. Tressler will testify that the, the treatment was inappropriate many times. It wasn't a, a, there was no formulation of a treatment plan. There was no coordination with other health care providers. Um, that the uh, medical records at times were not uh, obtained from other health care providers. There was no proper assessment of patient personal and community safety. There wasn't a, a proper assessment to manage the patient's medication regimen. Um, and uh, that uh, for one of the patients, there, um, the respondent utilized an assistant and she did not introduce this assistant or explain who this assistant was and obtained proper um, consent to do that. Um, and there was quite a few instances of inappropriate and uh, unprofessional conduct. Uh, in addition to that, there was obviously violations of uh, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. Um, and one of the uh, patients who treated with, she actually, um, you'll hear from both the patient as well as from the uh, Ms. Trussler, that the she prescribed an inappropriate medication, um, which led to a very unfortunate incident. And this patient ended up um, requiring emergency services. So it's a very serious case that you have here. Um, and we really, the department has nothing in front of us to indicate that this is a professional who is safe to practice. So the department asks that you give it its uh, your utmost attention, which of course this board always does, um, and to listen to the patients and after that make a determination whether uh, this healthcare practitioner 
uh, is safe to practice. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so since uh, Attorney Costello is going to hold her opening statements till the next time we um, this is on the agenda, uh, we will go off the record now while we review the documents just forwarded to us. <clears throat> off the record. Okay. All right.